Let's get straight into it. You might want to learn a tech I like to call jump dashing. It's pretty simple, and you've either seen it or done it yourself. You might have noticed that when you try to spam dash, there is a significant delay between your dashes. But this can be negated by jumping and then dashing immediately after your jump. So if you time it correctly, it'll make you a lot faster and you can basically skip areas entirely. It's not completely necessary to do, but it is good to learn and you should know because I am going to be doing it throughout this entire video, so I just wanted to let you know now. With that said, let's go over the charms and supers you might want to use throughout all of your P-Ranks. To get some of the obvious ones out of the way, Divine Relic and Smoke Bomb are naturally great charms for all of these P-Ranks. But some underrated charms that are surprisingly good for some of these P-Ranks are Twin Hearts, Coffee, and Whetstone. And actually, Smoke Bomb and Twin Hearts are the charms I'm going to be recommending the most throughout this entire video. But of course, I'll be going over the loadout for each run and gun when we get to them, so no worries about trying to guess what you need to use. For your super, obviously, Super Art 2 is the only super you can actually ring for these P-Ranks. It won't be useful too often, but for the first run and gun, it actually is pretty useful. And speaking of which, let's talk about Forest Follies right now. So my recommended loadout for Forest Follies is Invincibility and Coffee. Invincibility allows us to completely skip the ending of this run and gun, and Coffee will help with that. It's also one of the only ways to actually get past the ending without dealing damage, so you're kind of stuck with either doing this or another tactic that I'm not going to be explaining in this video. With that, let's get into it. When you enter the running gun, you'll want to start dashing immediately at least three times. Because after three dashes, there is a high likelihood that a flower guy will be right in front of you. In this case, you'll want to just do a high jump and then dash over them. You'll want to keep on dashing forward until you dash over the log. After, you'll want to dash onto the elevated ground in order to miss another one of the flower guys that could spawn in front of you. Keep on dashing forward, make sure to miss the mushroom, and go over the second log. Keep on dashing forward until you see the highly elevated ground, and then you'll want to do a big jump and then dash over onto it. There is a likely chance that there will be a flower minion in the way once you get to this area. And if that happens, it's honestly not a bad idea to just completely restart the level. This one flower guy alone will completely stop your pace and will risk you running into a lot more enemies than normal, since essentially the enemies will bundle up a lot more tighter since you can't get past them fast enough. This is technically all opinion though, so if you're able to slow down for a bit, dash over the guy, and not run into too many problems, then hey, good for you. Just know that this variation of the level is definitely a bit harder than normal. But anyways, assuming you didn't get that variation, you'll want to keep on dashing forward until you meet the log and the pink spiky bulb that's floating in the air. You'll want to parry all these spiky bulbs for later on in the level when you need to use your super. After doing that, you'll want to dash onto the floating platform. Keep on going forward until you see another log with a flower guy about to jump off it. Simply wait until he jumps off the log and then jump dash over and parry the pink spiky bulb. Once you get to the end of the log, you'll want to dash over the next flower guy in the way. Carefully dash over to the next log, over the mushroom, and make sure to parry the pink spiky bulb again. While still in the air from your parry, you'll want to do another dash over the next flower minion in your way. Keep on dashing forward, making sure to avoid any hits from the minions in front of you. Dash over to the log in front of you, make sure to get that last spiky bulb parry, and make sure to dodge the acorn if you need to. After, you'll want to dash as fast as possible so you can dodge the flower minion falling from above. Of course, jump dash over the gap and keep on going forward. There is a chance that a flower minion will spawn on the other side of the gap. So just be wary of this and make sure to jump dash over if needed. Keep on going forward until you meet the one mushroom on the ground. Then you'll want to do a jump dash because there can be a bothersome blueberry in the way, which you of course you want to avoid. You can also stay here and wait for parries if you don't have enough for your super. Make your way to the acorn machine, get close to it, jump, and use your super. This should give you enough clearance to dash over the acorn machine. Utilizing your invincibility, you'll want to just spam dash through all the enemies in your way. And you could just keep on spamming dash, take all the hits necessary, and make it to the end. If you want to do this faster, you can drop down below to where the toothy terrors come from, and then perfectly time your dashes as soon as the void area tries to bump you back up. And yeah, that should be it for this entire running gun. It can be a bit difficult if you're really not used to the fire minions earlier in the level, but the ending is by far the easiest once you have your super which is why I recommend you do what I'm doing in this video. I hope this helped in some way, but to waste no time, let's make our way to Treetop Trouble. The only thing you'll actually need or want is Smoke Bomb. 
you'll essentially be able to dash through every single attack during this run and gun. And if you don't bring Smoke Bomb, just know that you'll be a little bit slower because you have to stop at certain sections in the run and gun. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will not be using Smoke Bomb, but just know that pretty much all the obstacles can be completely avoided if you use it. Regardless though, patience is key for this run and gun. There is no reason to rush all your actions and you will most likely take hits if you do so. You can still play fast, but just understand that you will need to be patient for some sections in order to not take a hit. With that, let's finally get into it. Luckily, this run and gun is actually pretty simple in theory, so when you first start, all you want to do is dash over to the first woodpecker, making sure to dash between the bouncing beetles. After, you'll want to dash between another set of bouncing beetles and make your way to the next woodpecker. After that one, you should be able to dash between another set of bouncing beetles. Make your way to the next woodpecker, then after its attack, a bouncing beetle should be bouncing to the other side of the gap. Wait for it to do so, then travel to the other side of the woodpecker. After you make it to the other side, you should see a series of bouncing beetles with one rolling on the ground. They should be bouncing in a way where you can simply run or dash through the gaps very easily, and then just jump and dash over the one rolling on the ground. Jump and dash over right next to the last woodpecker, then after its attack, simply keep on dashing and then you'll make it to the end of this section. You will need to jump from platform to platform, with logs flying up and down or left to right. For the flying logs that go up and down, I highly urge you to be patient and make sure the log is high enough for you to jump onto the next platform. The flying beetles typically don't get too much in the way as long as you stay to the edges of these flying platforms. And of course, you could just be patient enough to wait for the beetles to leave the area so you can travel onto the flying logs safely. Well, you keep on traveling upwards, avoid the beetles, make sure to jump onto the flying logs correctly, and make it to the top of the tree. Once you make it to the top stack of wood, you can simply do a high jump and then dash over to completely clear them. This last section is more up to skill than something I can actually teach, so all I can really say is to do small jumps, don't stay on the platforms too long, and try to utilize your dashing as much as possible. Just try to follow the video if you can, since that's really the only way I can show you how to do this. What's really important is the ending where you have to fight the dragonfly. But, you can simply go to the furthest top platform, run to the very edge, jump, and then dash over. If you do this correctly, you should barely land on the ground right behind the dragonfly. And if you do so, congratulations, you have now P-ranked this run and gun. This run and gun is actually the easiest considering you can just use smoke bomb to avoid half of these obstacles, and it's the easiest one to learn. And honestly, that's all there is to it, so let's move on to Funfair Fever. For this run and gun, I highly recommend you use either Smoke Bomb or Twin Hearts, but Smoke Bomb would be more useful. Smoke Bomb counters pretty much all the sections where you would be forced to take damage otherwise, so it's what I highly recommend you bring. But for this demonstration, I will not be using Smoke Bomb, since then you will know how to do it without using Smoke Bomb. With that, when you start, you'll want to keep on dashing until you meet the trampoline. You'll need to manage moving the trampoline while also trying to jump over the walls and avoiding the balloons. I try to mimic what I'm doing in this video you see currently, but I'll try to explain it as well. For the first wall, I'd recommend you jump on the trampoline twice before dashing over. This will correctly space you for the next walls coming up. Once you scale the wall, there is a high likelihood that there will be a balloon in the way, and in this case, land on the trampoline and right as you're jumping off of it, dash immediately to cancel all your momentum and height. This is what I like to call dash cancelling. You of course can just dash over the balloon as well, but you just have to use your judgement to see what you can do. Anyways, after avoiding that balloon, you should be able to easily move the trampoline and jump over the next wall. There is yet another chance a balloon may spawn in this open area between both walls. Nonetheless, just try to avoid it and dash under or over it. If there wasn't a balloon, there's pretty much a guaranteed chance you're about to run into one in the next wall section. Again, just use your judgement to dash under or over it, and I prefer to dash under it, but that's just me. Well after that, you should be over this trampoline section. Keep on making your way forward and make sure to dash over the ball clowns. Parry the bell at its highest point and make your way to the next tent. This section is going to be the hardest without smoke bomb, but it is doable if you're willing to lose one health at the minimum. Make your way to the bottom right dunk platform. You'll want to fall under the platform, dash under the robot monkeys, take the damage, and then perform dash cancels until you make it to the cannon section at the end of the tent. This is a lot easier said than done, and will take a lot of practice in order for you to consistently be able to do this. Which is why you can completely mitigate all these troubles by just bringing Smoke Bomb. You can dash through all the robot monkeys, and actually the cannons too if you do it correctly. 
but without Smoke Bomb, you can actually take out these cannons and they won't go against your P-Rank. This is one of the only exceptions in all the running guns, which is kind of crazy to think about. So yeah, just use whatever weapon you have, shoot the cannons down, and then move on. Keep on going forward, parry the bell again at its highest point, dodge over the first ball clown, but when you get to this wooden box, do not jump and dash. The magician that's been following you around this entire time will always spawn up in this area, so you'll want to do a jump dash between the ball clown and the magician. Then you'll parry the bell over to the duck shooting area. While using Smoke Bomb or Miss Chalice while we're mentioning it, you can completely dash under this machine to completely counter it. Otherwise, you're simply gonna have to take a hit here. After that, you'll finally enter the last section of the running gun. You'll have to traverse across moving platforms with pretzel guys jumping up and down. I'd recommend being patient and making sure you absolutely have an opening to get past these pretzel guys, otherwise just use Smoke Bomb. Keep on making your way forward, and as soon as you get to the second pretzel guy, condiments will start firing from across the screen. This is why you should be extra patient when trying to pass these pretzel guys, because you might accidentally dash into a condiment. Well, it's completely up to you to get past this and get to the end of this section with as little hits as possible, and you'll want to have at least 2 HP by the end of this section. At the end, you'll see the hot dog that is shooting out the condiments. And sadly, the only real viable way to get past this hot dog guy without eliminating him is by just taking the damage and moving past him. If you time it very perfectly though, at the height of the platform, you can try to jump over and dash and you could possibly make it without taking damage. But that specifically is 100% easier said than done. And it is surprisingly difficult to do this consistently, so you should just try to have the 1 HP available to just take the hit. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to P-Ranking Funfair Fever. So let's move on to Funhouse Frazzle. The only thing you'll actually need for this running gun is Twin Hearts. This is actually one of the most simple running guns, but it's one of the hardest to master, which is why Twin Hearts is the best to keep your HP intact for the entire running gun. And all the other charms are just simply not necessary. So let's get straight into it. When you start, you'll want to dash at least 5 times until you reach the third pink card. Once you reach it, you'll want to parry it, begin falling, and right as you're about to hit the cars, dash over. These toy cars have a surprisingly small hitbox, which we will take advantage of in the next section. After dodging over the car, just simply keep on dashing until you make it to the first wall. You'll want to wait until one of the mouths is open. If the bottom mouth is open, you can simply wait and dash over the two cars that come out of the mouth and then go through the open mouth to completely skip the wall, or right as the cars are coming out, you can do a small jump and dash right between the cars and the teeth. If you do so correctly, you'll dash between them and completely skip this wall as well. This also is easier said than done, but it is definitely practicable and doable consistently. If the top mouth's the one that opens, you can still perform both tricks, but I'd recommend just waiting out the cars to come out, dodge the kissing mouths, and then dash through the wall with the mouth still open. After passing through the wall, you'll be in the next section with the star cannons and the tiny rockets. For this section in particular, it is better to be patient and go a little bit slower than normal because you can typically get hit a lot by the cannons or the tiny rockets. But if you're anything like me and your pride gets in the way of you going below any speed past Mach 5, then you're just gonna have to pray that these enemies don't hit you. But really all you have to do is just keep on dashing and then waiting whenever a cannon or a tiny rocket gets in the way. It's really that simple. If you put a little patience in this section, the rest of the running gun should be pretty easy. But to simplify, there really isn't anything I can say to help you pass this section, it's really up to you. So after you get past this section, I'd actually recommend you go onto the ceiling of the running gun. If you do so, you'll barely have to move between the ceiling and the floor. All you're really doing for this section is just constantly dashing and making sure to do small jumps to pass over the gaps that you need to. I'll more or less let the gameplay speak for itself. Well, once you reach the second tuba, all you have to do is parry the pink card and right as you're below it, dash to the platform. Then after, parry the next pink card you can. You'll want to do a big jump off the ceiling and then time your dash well to make it to the next platform. Then you essentially do another big jump and then dash over across the jack in the box. Keep on going forward until you meet the last wall. And you're essentially doing the exact same thing as the previous wall, but this time a tongue will stick out that will cover that entire side of the screen. You can either take the damage, dash to the mouth and beat the running gun, or wait until the tongue is gone and do the same thing. And yeah, that should be everything there is for Funhouse Frazzle. I hope the gameplay footage in the background is enough to show what you need to do for this running gun, since this running gun is more up to skill rather than just being able to teach you how to do it. 
And with nothing else to say, let's move on to Rugged Ridges. Now, the charm selection for this running gun in particular is actually pretty good. The viable charms here are Smoke Bomb, Twin Hearts, and Whetstone. And of course, if you really wanted to, you could also just use Divine Relic. This is the only running gun that the majority of enemies have enough health to tank one hit of Whetstone. And you can use Whetstone here as a maneuverability tool to completely avoid certain attacks, and also cross obstacles with ease. For the sake of this demonstration though, I will be using Twin Hearts. And on top of your charm, you could use Invincibility here if you got enough parries or are using Coffee or Divine Relic. So with that, let's talk about Rugged Ridges. When you start, you'll want to immediately dash onto the balance scale. Then, you can dash through the pillar the Mountain Goat is standing on to make it to the next balance scale. You should be able to jump dash right after landing on this balance scale, and the fire thing shouldn't be in the way, but if it is, you can just wait it out. You'll want to keep on maneuvering through the goats, jumping and dashing when needed until you meet the first mountain lion. Right as you approach it, it should do its roar that tries to push you back. You can simply wait this out right at the edge of this platform. Then after its roar, you can actually jump and dash over it, or use whetstone to clear it as well. If you're willing to take a damage though, you can dash right under the platform the mountain lion is standing on, take a hit, and then dash around three times and land back on the ground. Either way, you'll be dodging past the pyro head and will make it to the last set of balance skills and the mountain goat. The safest way to get across this is to wait till the mountain goat throws his pickaxe, stand on the edge of the platform right next to his foot, then jump and dash over him. Keep on dashing until you make it to the elevator. For this section, you're simply gonna have to avoid the clay golems and the dragon that spits fireballs at you. This dragon can also shoot pink fireballs, and after the first one, every other fireball will be pink. Get the parries if you want here, they're not exactly necessary unless you're able to actually get your super via coffee or divine relic. But you can always use the parries as a maneuverability tool to avoid the clay golems. And you can also bait the fireballs to go where you want. For example, you can jump right as the dragon is about to shoot a fireball in order to bait it off the screen. But other than that, you're gonna have to deal with this by yourself. Assuming you make it to the bottom with no trouble, you'll want to dash off the elevator about four times before the wall shows up. If you're fast enough, as soon as the wall pops up, you can parry its face and completely dash over it. Otherwise, you could spam parry its face to avoid any enemies and projectiles and just wait until the face is high enough to dash over. After clearing the wall, keep on dashing until you meet the second mountain lion. Use the previous strategies earlier to get past the mountain lion, and then do basically the same thing for the next wall. Now you have to deal with the last section with the cyclops. You'll have to traverse from platform to platform with pyro heads in the way while the cyclops takes out the platforms behind you. Literally all you have to do is play slow and play conservatively, and that's pretty much it. You'll want to look ahead and make sure pyro heads aren't in the way, but other than that, just take your time and this should be really easy to get over. You can use your invincibility super near the end to very quickly finish the running gun. And you can actually count the glass panes in the background to tell when you're near the end. By the fourth glass pane is when you're near the end, so that's when you can use your invincibility super, just spam dash and make it all the way to the end. And I guess that's all there really is to talk about. There's no reason to overcomplicate this. So that means we'll finally move on to Perilous Piers. Let me start with something controversial. If it wasn't for the octopus at the end of this running gun, this would be one of the easiest running guns in the game. And if you couldn't guess why, it's because Smoke Bomb is an absolute carry for this running gun. Quite literally, every single thing can be countered with Smoke Bomb. And I don't mean just some things here and there, I'm talking about everything. We're talking about the flying fish, the barnacles, the urchins, the crabs, the lobster, the bubble stars, and even the oyster and shrimp during the octopus sequence. So if you essentially play what I like to call correctly, then this running gun is really not that difficult, except for the octopus part of course. But everything else is adaptable and learnable if you take the time to do so. And you could always bring your super art too if you get enough parries for your super. Well with that, let's finally go over perilous piers. When you start the running gun, you'll want to dash over to the wooden box. Once you do so, there is a significant chance that a flying fish will be in the way. Simply wait for it to pass or dash over it with Smoke Bomb. Keep going forward to the barnacle and simply dash through it. Make your way to the wooden box and the barnacle sitting on top of it, then do a jump dash through it. There is another significant chance that a fish will spawn right here in your way. You could try to dash through the fish and the barnacle, but risk getting hit most likely, or you could wait a second, then dash through the barnacle. Either way, you can honestly spam dash here, passing by all the urchins until you get to the next barnacle. 
If you for whatever reason can't spam through this section, then of course just play slow, but then stop by the next barnacle. Wait a second after it does its attack, then dash to the end of this section. If you pace yourself correctly, you should be right next to the crab section with an opening clearly for you to stand in. The crab should have just bounced off the wall and the sea urchin should be going towards the wall as you get into this area. Or it's already bounced off the wall. This is surprisingly consistent to do if you pace yourself correctly, so just watch the footage you see right here and try to mimic this as close as possible. You'll want to jump onto the crab, wait till you get to the next one, then rinse and repeat. This is obviously the safest way to do it, but you can go on the ground and then jump onto the next crab if you want to increase your pace. Just be aware that there are still flying fish that can spawn here that can get directly in your way if you're standing on the crabs. Now, it's ultimately up to you to get past this section with as little trouble as possible. At the end, you'll want to jump onto the wooden box, then onto the dock where a sea urchin can spawn. Make sure to be aware of this and dash through it if needed. Once you get to about halfway on this dock, the lobster will spawn and you can simply jump dash over it. Make sure to parry the buoy, then dash forward, dash through the barnacle, then keep on going forward until you make it to the next buoy. You'll simply want to do a jump dash over to it, then parry it. Then, get somewhat close to the next barnacle, then dash through it onto the very edge of the dock. Then that's pretty much the rest of this section. It is surprisingly easy to outrun the lobster, and it's what I recommend you do every single time you play this running gun. Once you're on the boat, scale over the urchin, then get to where the octopus is holding the platforms. You'll want to jump dash onto the first two platforms, but once you get to the buoy, make sure to parry it before dashing over to the next platform. Keep on going until you get to the octopus, then parry the jewel on top of its head. The most I can say about this section is to make sure you parry the jewel as a mobility tool and to get rid of the rocks in your way. And other than that, maybe try not making too many drastic movements unless you need to, and make sure to utilize smoke bomb to dash through the shrimp or the oyster shots. And I believe every fourth or fifth shrimp is a parryable one, which is how you can get your super for this last section. I'll try to let the gameplay explain itself since it's probably the only way I'll actually be able to show you how you can do this. You'll know you're at the end of the level if the Molten Howard building in the background's edge is aligned perfectly with the middle of the jewel. And this is where you could use your super to rush to the end of the level. And that's pretty much all I have to say about Perilous Piers. All the other sections in this running gun are pretty easy to learn and adaptable since they're pretty consistent in how they work. So yeah, that's how you easily P-rank every single running gun in this game. Just to state the obvious before we close this out, Divine Relic is objectively the best charm you can bring for pretty much all these running guns since it gives you smoke bomb, coffee, whetstone, and heart ring for more health. And also, this video assumes that you're at least familiar with the running guns and you've beaten them at least once or twice. And if you need any additional help, I recommend going through the level normally while still trying to apply all the strategies and tactics I mentioned in this video. That way, you actually learn the level and you understand what you need to do, then later on you can attempt your P-Ranks if you feel like you're ready. Thank you all for watching. I made this video mainly as an archival way for older and newer players alike to come back to to understand what tactics they can utilize throughout their run and gun playthroughs. So liking, subscribing, and sharing this video will really help out the channel and boost this video into the recommendations. And with that, best of luck with your P-Ranks.